It's after dark on October 16, 1988, when a young woman in Lansing, Michigan, got home from work. The door to her comfortable townhouse was still locked. She had no reason to expect a visitor. Actors have helped us reconstruct the events that shattered a quiet night. take certain calls, you know just as you pick it up that it's going to be a bad one. You just know it. You get a gut feeling. At 8.55 p.m., a call came in to 911 dispatcher Paul Bolden. I'm in the chat. Who stabbed you, ma'am? Uh, Can you give me? Five, seven, uh, 150, 160 pounds, wearing a beanie, black leather coat. I don't know. You've got to get something. I've got to have. Well, I'm bleeding. All okay, over ma'am, ma'am. Where have you been stabbed? In the chest on the left side. Okay, just calm down, just calm down. I'm trying to keep calm, sir. He was here waiting for me. He drank a beer. He left it here. There may be fingerprints. He was in my Okay, ma'am, just hang on here just a minute. Wait up. I am bleeding. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to get somebody in route. I had a stabbing just occur. 4037. The victim here has been stabbed in the chest. Her accused is a male, 5'7", 150, 155 pounds. Last seen wearing a black leather jacket. He was in wait, waiting for her. Had stabbed her in the chest. Attention, South End Unit had a stabbing just occurred. Three police officers responded to the call. They took her wallet and about $20 dollars in cash. Yes, ma'am, I know you're hurting. Nice and easy. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Ma'am, is there anybody there that assists you at the house? No, I might be able to get my neighbors. Had a stabbing just occur. 4037. He took my victim. money. It was yeah. probably fifteen, twenty dollars. Ma'am, just ma'am, hang on a minute. I'm trying she's to. She's the one that was stabbed. That's right. She was stabbed up. in the chest. Okay, we'll have somebody go by. Ma'am, I'm going to pass out. I can feel it right. Oh, can you sit down anywhere? Can you just sit down? Can you hang on the phone and sit down? Okay. I did not want her to pass out on me. I told her to put pressure to the wound and then just concentrate on your breathing. Because time is the thing that's against you when you've been assaulted. Female subject is still on the line. Considering the location of the wound, my concern was the lung's been punctured. I have no idea how I got in the house. My door was, I had to unlock it to get in. That's all right. Don't talk anymore. I want you to save your breath, okay? I can't get up to unlock the door. Okay, I just want you to stay right there. I don't want you to move. We will get into you. Don't worry about that. Oh, it hurts. Okay, I know it does. I just want you to concentrate on your breathing. It seems like this time is the longest ever, but they're going to be there. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it does. Go ahead. If you feel like crying, just go ahead and let it out. Sometimes that crying will help. My voice is her only link to outside help. And if I don't stay calm, she doesn't either. She's going to lose it. I'm trying. I can't hold it up much longer. It's okay. I'm going to have somebody there very, very soon. 
want that breathing in your nose and out through your mouth. I'm getting dizzy, my head's starting to hurt. Yes, ma'am, that's going to happen. I honestly felt when her voice was quivering and she was telling me that I'm getting weak. I thought that she was going to die on the phone with me. Think about that breathing. I don't want you to think about anything else. In through that nose and out through the mouth. Just nice and easy I'm breath. Hurting. Yes, ma'am, I know you're hurting. I want you to just relax everything that you possibly can. I know it's going to hurt. I don't want you to think about that at all. Just think about your breathing. Nice and easy. Just real nice and easy. My ears are starting to ring. I'm going to pass out. I know I'm going to. When Sergeant Nancy Small arrived at the scene, the front door was locked from the inside. She's locked. She's about to pass out there. The, the house is locked up. They're going to have to break in to get to her. Nice and easy. I want you to breathe nice and easy. My officers are outside. The ambulance is outside. They're going to try to get inside the house. You will probably hear a crashing sound. I don't want you to become startled or alarmed. We were trying to find a way to get in. Around the back, there was a window that looked in, so I went around to the back, and as I got closer to the window, I could see that the window was partially open, so I climbed through the window. Okay, I got officers coming through the back of the house. You have an open window back there, so don't be startled. It's going to be my I think she was about at the end of a rope at that point. She was bleeding quite badly. Very chalky colored, appeared to have lost a lot of blood. Nice and easy. She was stabbed one time to the chest. The blade was approximately three inches long. If she not been able to contact 911, it's very possible that she'd have bled to death. Okay, Mr. Smith, up here. Prima Church was prepared. She knew what to say, and that's one of the good calls. That's one of those that you feel good about because. As bad as the situation was, at least something good came out of it. She knew to dial 911, and it worked. That evening, I went to the hospital uh, to see how bad it was. It had punctured through her lung. If she'd got up and moved around, it could have been lethal. It was a nightmare for me to be assaulted. My life has had to take a 360-degree turnaround. I've now moved in with my brother. I have to be much more uh, careful about giving out my telephone number, giving out my address, but I've chosen to go on with my life and not be afraid. I can't live being afraid, wondering, and looking over my shoulder all the time. Prima was released from the hospital within five days. When I returned to work, my company had approached me and said, we would like to honor the person that saved your life. When the night came for the party, I'm kind of like searching the crowd for this person, and the next thing I know, he was there, and I'm shaking the hand of the person that saved my life. And they asked me to stand up, and there was a thousand people in that room, and they clapped, and they clapped, and they clapped. If I was anywhere else, I probably would have started crying. I really would have. I was just overwhelmed that, that everything that I wanted to do and the things that I was doing had made a difference. And I just always had the feeling inside of me that my goal in life was to help people. And with 911, I can do that. Whatever emergency you have, you can call 911 and we'll be there. 911 emergency. Next. I knew we had to do something to get him off there. We need to get this helicopter going. But he would just be a body floating in the river. 